The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow in his steps in the way that leads to eternal life, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still not, do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do these works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As you may have noticed, we leave the resurrection accounts and move further into the heart of the gospel according to John. Here we have the words of Jesus that sound so familiar for a different reason than we may have been used to. We hear this day, do not let your hearts be troubled, believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? Comforting words indeed. We hear these words that can soothe our heart, words that we often hear at a celebration of life. But this is not as an occasion of looking back, but forward. These are the words to address our anxieties and worries, but still far more for what is to come. These are the words that get to the heart of Jesus' last lecture, his final teaching to the disciples on Holy Thursday before his passion and after he has given a new commandment to them, to us. 
for us, these words are now an affirmation of how we as Easter people live into this Easter life with Jesus, this life we now call the way. I believe that for us, the important message of today's gospel passage is that the risen, exalted Christ continues his words and his works in his successors, the disciples. Following the way is about living into the new commandment. The gospel makes it clear who is to be involved in the way. We, as the body of Christ, are formed into a new sense of community, who we each are, and as we live into that way, in my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? Jesus was pointing to what was to come. By his resurrection, that new way is here now. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these. More than comforting words, here is the assurance and joy of Christ that we are each called to be a part of this great mission. There is room for more than one approach for many gifts and passions. When we hear this lesson from a celebration of life, I often say this shows us that Jesus doesn't say just one way to love, but we are to love with all that we are about, who we each are. But how? How can we know the way? As Thomas, like all of us, would ask, Jesus says to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. And from now on, you do know him and have seen him. Hardly a statement of exclusivity. I believe Jesus is providing a statement of ultimate truth for each of us. How our lives and ministry, this is all that is necessary to live right with God and find our own identity and purpose within God's way. Jesus is the way, not just to a new outlook, but a whole new way of living. That new commandment is called to love, agape, but it's a different sense of love than we've seen before. The new commandment to love one another and then to abide in God's love is to live in the way of love that is selfless, love that is offering oneself, not about what we get, but what we give. It begins with choosing Christ for yourself and then takes you beyond yourself alone into a new sense of belonging, a sense of community, one formed from the communion of God and now entrusted to us here and now as the latest generation of that group gathered of disciples. How we each allow ourselves to discover and then nourish our gifts, our gifts entrusted to us. This way is all about the deeper Christian idea, therefore, of what it means to be called, or vocation itself. Frederick Buechner, a few years ago, the noted theologian and pastor, defined vocation as that place where our deep sense of passion meets the world's needs. And that passion that we choose to nurture in God's name is what can set our hearts ablaze, just as it was described for the two travelers to Emmaus. Just as we'll hear again within the festival of Pentecost, the word that has come near to us this day from the gospel according to John is that the truth of the resurrection of Jesus, the mission continues in both words and actions through his successors, through the body of Christ, through us as disciples. When we choose Christ as the way for our lives, as we have and as we affirm with every baptism, we choose to trust in God's grace and love and are saying yes to his way yes to that way of love, his truth and the life for ourselves. Philip, as we heard in our gospel, responds with a request for certainty in all of this. Well, just show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. Show us a sign from above. But Jesus reminds all of us that the proof is in who we are to one another. From now on, you do know him and have seen him because we reveal God in how we embody the way. We reveal God and how love is offered for the sake of the other, how we serve one another. It is not a secret with, uh, with a fixed place or time, but a people committed to abide in the way of love. And with all this, perhaps the most powerful statement of our faith individually is simply our own conviction that following Jesus is the way for you. It is the way of love. Amen.
The Prayers of the People are Form 3, found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who commend themselves to our prayers, especially remembering this week, Barry, Don, El, Ella, Jeff, the Gopal family, the Flanagan family, Jacob, Jane, Jennifer, Jim, Joe, June, Lana, Lily, Mary, Robbie, Sam, Susan, and all those affected by natural disasters and human tragedies, especially remembering the people of Ukraine at this time. And we pray for the first responders and the aid and relief efforts that continue there and around the world and on all others who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. We pray especially for peace in our homes and around the world, remembering those who have lost their homes and families to violence here and abroad as well as those who serve and protect our own freedom, especially Harrison, Matt, Becky, Jennifer, Steve, Philip, and Tony, for their safety as well as the just use of the power that is placed in their hands. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. I invite your own petitions and thanksgivings offered at this time. Let us remember and pray for our pastoral care team and Stephen ministry. Risen Lord, you have commanded us to love one another and commissioned us to make disciples. Help us as we live into the fullness of your call to new life. Give us wisdom and clarity as we prayerfully consider your call to serve and seek the most effective ways to bring your healing love to those in need. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> 